important do you think UGC is for restaurants? I mean, if you think about, all right, look, I've got an Instagram account. I'm running a restaurant. I could either post all of my own food pornography and we could take really good pictures of, of our key dishes, or we could really encourage our customers to do the same. Uh, really great lighting, or maybe we nudge them in some way. Maybe it's a contest. Maybe it's not. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Obviously, when, when, when customers do it, you have a little less consistency and less control, uh, but it has more authenticity, or maybe uh, the answer is a little bit of both. Um, I would say that there's, so I would say, the first answer to the question is I think UCG is really, really valuable. And the two biggest values it has is a time saving. Uh, if you could just repost somebody you don't have to go out and create the post that like saves you some time in a pinch uh so that's good uh everybody needs more time back in their day but moreover i think reposting one of your customers piece of content is similar to saying thank you to them when they review you on yelp you know they've said something nice about you they've cared enough to recommend your business to their friends followers and family and by you reposting it and that would include giving them attribution hey my customer posted this here's their screen name yada yada you're saying thank you. In addition, right, the power of views is that they recommend businesses. So if I see a restaurant has lots of customers that because they're sharing their content, recommending them, that gives a stronger signal to me that I might want to go try it. You're out there all the time in the burger, steak, pizza, french fry <laughs> ecosystem, especially in the New York area. That sounds like a unique ecosystem to be a part of. That sounds like a universe that Rick and Morty travel to. It does. I would, <laughs> I would, I would love that. Um, what's, what's, what's next? Uh, what, what's on the horizon? Is there a, some sort of a pizza trend, a burger trend uh, that, that you're like, hey, kids, in the next year, watch for this? You know, if I could predict food trends, I'd probably have a lot more money in the bank than I do. <laughs> uh, and if I could also predict social media trends, I'd probably have even more money in the bank. Good point. Bank. Good point. <laughs> uh, I don't think in terms of food, uh, the basics will ever go anywhere. French yeah. fries, pizza, wings, burgers, sushi, whatever you consider those to be. That's great. Sandwiches. <laughs> well, there, there are a number of types of burgers now, right? You, you've got the classic kind of backyard burger. You've got the super overloaded, almost like you won't believe that we made this with a burger. How is that possible? Kind of a circumstance. Um, like, you know, like, especially on Instagram, like I follow your account, which kind of got me into the whole burger rabbit hole. Uh, and, and some of it is just like borderline absurd, right? It's like, okay, like that doesn't, like, how do you, that won't even work as a consumer? Like, are you looking for the roller coaster of, uh, of beef, uh, or, or something that's a little bit more, uh, approachable and, uh, and viable? Um, I want to start by saying thank you for not just saying, hey, Rev, what's your favorite burger? Because that is another version of this question that I guess all asked all the time that's impossible to answer. Um, if I'm going to choose, like, what's my favorite style of burger? Man, uh, two to three ounces of fresh ground beef smashed on a flat top grill that's been well seasoned with griddled onions, American cheese, and a squishy bun. And that's it. Um, if I happen to go to a restaurant where they are producing the roller coaster of beef and all that crazy stuff, I'm for sure going to try it. And I'm for sure interested, but I will always go back to like that classic, really simple American roadside burger. We'll have to ask you this again, Rev, uh, before we get to the last two questions, because I know our audience always wants to know, like, how did this happen? Like, I mean, I feel like a lot of people would want to be a foremost Instagram hamburger expert or a pizza influencer. Um, like, that seems rad. Uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about that career path. Um, so God, I used to be in the music business many, 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 many lifetimes ago. And prior to being in the music business, I wrote about music cause I have always fancied myself a writer. And so when I got in the music business, I didn't want to write about the music business. I just wanted to write about something else cause I still wanted to write. So I started reviewing hamburgers just because I wanted that creative outlet. And one day I decided the music business was silly and nobody could make money anymore. And I want to be in the food business cause you can't download a hamburger. Um, or a pizza. And I just kept doing it. And I kept writing and I kept iterating and I kept thinking about it. And I realized it was a channel that could help me achieve other goals. And, you know, if you go read two out of five things I put on Instagram, the photo is for sure 
uh, pizza porn, you know, steak porn, you know, gratuitous French fries. But if you read the text, it's about, you know, digital marketing, influencer marketing, you know, marketing inspiration, Insta, you know, Instagram tactics. Um, the food is just my headline. And, you know, how did it get started? Like, I realized that I could provide greater value and that these were great channels and great methods by which I could provide greater value to people.